Ah. Let's see here. Yep. The Grolsch tap handle works. That's what's important here. From what I've seen of home bars at my friends' homes and houses I've lived in in the past is home bars usually tend to skip the draft beer part about having a bar. It's a giant pain in the ass, but it really adds to the experience of the home bar. Now, there's some things that I can do on this build that can be half-assed, but keg beer necessarily can't be one of them. I have to whole-ass something after all. I converted a dorm-sized refrigerator into a kegerator about five years ago, and I hope to reuse it, but it still needs a little bit of work. For this application, I want to modify it so that I can have the beer tower sit on top of the bar above the kegerator, which was shown in the previous video. But before I get around to modifying the kegerator, I need to make sure that it actually still works. I set an outdoor thermometer in it overnight for a good idea of how it's operating, and the results were a success. Uh, maybe on the low end of the ideal beer range, but still good after all. Since it's sat for the last three years with a keg in it, I'm replacing the lines and most of what the beer has touched due to safety concerns, and the fact that the rebuild kit for a beer tower is only about 30 bucks on Amazon. Link in the description below to that. So basically everything that has ever had beer touch it needs to be replaced. So let's get right into it. So after all of that setup and all of that backstory and everything, now it's time to actually rebuild this thing. Now I ran this hose through the bar off camera because it's kind of, uh, I, I kind of needed to concentrate because it needed to go through those rings that I cut out on the CNC and yeah it it just needed run that way now the important thing with rebuilding a beer tower like this is you have to remember the order in which you took things out because that is exactly the way it has to go back in so for clarity's sake I removed the insulation on the inside so you can see what's going on uh, with it it's just well let's see yeah it's just a, a stainless steel thing there with a rubber hose on it that goes down to the keg um, along with uh, some fittings that hook the faucet up to it and this is all watertight sealed and everything now you will need some special tools for this. In this case, you need a faucet wrench. Now, if you don't have one, one could be had from a beer distributor for about two or three bucks. Or you can always check Amazon. Now, the threads on these are counterintuitive. This is kind of, and in case you, in case you uh, get one from an estate sale or buy one on eBay and you, you don't have much experience with them, you will have to take this off from time to time for cleaning. Because when we originally took this off, this wouldn't move at all. Uh, I had to take a hammer and give it a good whack right there in order to release the plug of mold that was in there. So just for comparison's sake, this is the one I just took off. This is the one I'm putting on. See, see the difference? Now I am gonna soak this in some sterilizer in order to get the mold out and maybe salvage this for the future so I have two faucets so I don't, I'm not constantly cleaning faucets on it. So, on to the B reel and and actually tearing this apart. So there's one main thing that's holding this all together and that's that huge brass nut on the inside. It's a good idea to take pictures of what you're doing while you do it if you're rebuilding a kegerator. And all this stuff, just let it... Come on. Come on. 
all of this stuff and it's a good idea to stack them up sort of like so just so you remember how they go because there's a lot of parts for this and then shoot I forgot how this comes off there oh yeah that's right it snaps out the front now remember that I'm trusting you guys to remember that for me to help me out here okay oh be real down so what we end up with is just a, a chromed steel tube that's it that's all a beer tower is so what we're gonna do now is the same thing in reverse order but we have to remove a few things first. I'm going to put this clamp on here just so I remember, so I don't forget. I'm going to put all, all of this stuff, all of this stuff on the hose in the order in which it came off. Don't go down there. Don't. No. Uh, this clamp wants to get away. And this goes like this. I believe. Yeah. No, it doesn't, because this hose has to come up through to here, because how else are we going to put it on this thing? Now don't be tempted to spit on this to make it uh, lubricated. That's not good for the hose, it's not good for the cleanliness of the beer. Why should I tell you that? Because you should probably already know. This is going to hurt a lot. All right, so we have that on there. And now, it's a matter of things falling where they need to go. And then this thing decides to bind up. Great. Okay, so now, let me show you what's going on. Let me just unhook the GoPro. See, what's going on is I have to get that worm gear clamp all the way forward here and onto the end of the hose so it stays. And then I need to adjust it so I can actually get a screwdriver on there. And I keep stepping on my mic cable. All right. Thank you. 
hate slotted screwdriver stuff. I mean, it's 2017. Let's do away with the straight bit. The flathead, the machine screw, whatever. Now that it's on there, it's going to be really difficult to move things where they need to be. So you have all this hose that's working against me. This is a tight squeeze into this hole. I'm not sure it's compatible. That would be sad. So then I'd have to cut a hole bigger. Oh man, it's just tight. All right. So now I'm going to try to get on there. Get on there. See, now, in order to get a, an insulated column between the kegerator and the tower, what I need to do is fill this hole with spray foam. This is going to be fun. I love this stuff. Taking a quick look down below here. And I have a nice little pancake coming out of there. <laughs> oh, geez. And what's it look like down here? Yeah, I got a little bit of a drip. That's no big deal. Yeah, that turned out pretty well. I can see it coming out the cracks in the donuts. It's going to expand to fit. Well, that's fun. Now I have to just let it cure. And that'll be an hour or so till this is uh, safe to touch and I can mount this up. Back in a bit. And now comes a moment I've certainly been waiting for. Buttoning up the exterior, the aesthetics, by putting the faucet on. Let's do that. There's a spline shaft on here, so you don't want to rotate it a whole lot. And once again, the thread is counterintuitive. And then we give it a good twist with the wrench here. And a little bit of a finishing touch of a handle. And you can adjust it just a little bit, and there you have it. I'm really happy with how this turned out. Now, never mind all the crap on the bar. This is all still the keg tap, the CO2 setup, and everything. That I will put together off camera. And this concludes the kegerator rebuild. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll talk to you later.